Have you ever wondered what is happening pathologically to your hypovolemic trauma patient? You know they're losing a lot of blood, but what else could they be losing? Well, if you said calcium, then you are correct. Calcium enters into your cardiac muscle cells and helps with the electrical signal. This mineral also plays a vital role in myocardial contraction. There are two types of calcium. We have our serum calcium and our ionized calcium. For this discussion, we'll be focusing on ionized calcium. Ionized calcium is also known as free calcium because this type of calcium is not attached to proteins within the body. The normal range for ionized calcium is 4.4 to 5.2 milligrams per deciliter, with a critically low calcium being classified as anything less than 3.6. Calcium is also important for the bones, the teeth, and heart, but it also plays a really important role in platelet adhesion. It helps your body form clots. So with a previously mentioned, I think we can easily identify why calcium plays a crucial role in our trauma patients. So we're just going to talk for a moment on the clotting process itself. Your blood has 12 factors. There are actually 13 numerals, but only 12 factors because factor 6 was found to be a part of another factor, which is activated factor 5. Each specific clotting factor has a job, and these factors work together to make threads of protein called fibrin. Fibrin is signaled in your body when you are bleeding, and the fibrin forms with protein fibrinogen, which is also produced by the liver and found in blood plasma. When your body sends the blood loss signal, the fibrinogen is converted into fibrin at the source of the bleed by an action called thrombin. Thrombin is what actually causes the fibrinogen to convert to fibrin. Trauma-induced coagulopathy is a phenomenon that occurs when the body can't clot effectively. Calcium plays a huge role in the regulation of the coagulation cascade, which is paramount in the maintenance of hemostasis. Other than platelet activation, calcium ions are responsible for complete activation of several coagulation factors, including coagulation factor 13. When a patient is exsanguinating, they're inevitably losing calcium in the ability to clot. In reference to blood transfusions, we need to note that blood banks use a chelating agent to bind the calcium so the blood won't clot in the bag. Approximately each unit of blood contains 3 grams of citrate, this amount is usually cleared from the body within approximately five minutes by the liver. When a patient has experienced significant trauma and needs multiple units of blood, this will compromise the liver and subsequently decrease citrate elimination. This ultimately leads to high levels of citrate, which binds to the patient's calcium and causes it to become inactive. This results in hypocalcemia. Therefore, the frontline treatment is going to be calcium administration. We need to remember the lethal trauma triad. We have our hypothermia, our coagulopathy, and acidosis. All three of these things can affect your patient's chances of surviving. Hypothermia can cause a decrease in clotting factors in platelet function. Acidosis can cause an acceleration in fibrinogen degradation. And lastly, coagulopathy can cause a change between clotting, anticoagulation, in fibrinolysis, which is the breakdown of the fibrin in the blood clots. After learning more about calcium, and the importance of calcium's functions and roles should we be focusing on calcium as well.